Good morning and welcome to The Review, the Instagram Live podcast where Kendama news, culture, and stories are shared over the warmth of coffee. I'm your host, Adam or Cafe Kendama on Instagram, and we are excited you are here with us today. It's 2021, guys. The sun is shining. And we have the wonderful opportunity today to set forward into this new year with a new mindset towards Kendama, a community-based mindset. I know that Kendama can be played alone, but it is better played together. And that's why we launched the Coffee Gang Discord server, the most caffeinated Kendama Discord, where we just gather, we play, we sesh, we do tutorials, tips, we brew coffee together. It's a wonderful place for us to gather about the things that we love communally. Uh, secondly, if you haven't checked it out, go and head over to www.cafekanama.com to go peep the new website design. You can grab the Brew View and Review PDF as well as you can finally now get yourself your own Kendama Latte mug. They're up on the site for sale already, so you can go check it out and pick one of those up after the show today and they will get shipped out early next week. Uh, before we do dive into this week's episode, I want to know what you are drinking this morning as you come to the review. Peaches and Kareem down in the chat telling us that he is drinking tea this morning, as per usual, you would assume. Guys, we have a wonderful episode today. We have Mr. Ben Conte, professional free runner and Kendama player for Kendama France, uh, joining us for the review. We are going to be talking all things parkour, free running, and Kendama, and the relationship between those two worlds and how we can bring them together. So we are going to be diving into that conversation here in a couple minutes, but I want to know what you guys are drinking this morning. I see that Tom.com888 is drinking tea this morning. In a couple moments here, we'll get Ben on here, and I want to remind you guys that this is a live interview, a live conversation, and there's two great ways to participate each week as we do these episodes. One is let me know you're here by dropping a comment down below in the chat, and two, by hitting that question box and dropping a question in there for Ben or for myself. We've set aside time in today's interview to answer your questions. So without further ado, let's make sure we get Ben in here and get this review on the road. Yeah, Owen is drinking water and Joseph is also drinking water as well. Right on. Ben, dude, welcome here. Hello. How you Yay. doing? I'm so excited. Dude, I am so excited. I, I, was, I was thinking about whether or not I should brush up on my French for this interview and see if we could pull off a French one. But, but my French is, uh, uh, je parle français, uh, uh, jus de caca. C'est <laughs> déjà bien. C'est déjà très bien. <laughs> yeah, uh, je, je, parle, je parle français, c'est très terrible. Very, very bad. <laughs> Actually, your accent is pretty good. Well, I, I went to a French immersion school for like a year, oh. like a long time ago, but I got kicked out. I wasn't very good at French. Oh. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's such a difficult language. Language, It's like, it's so hard. Even for me, it's still hard, you know, and I've been speaking it for my whole life. Yeah, <laughs> it is a hard language for sure. French French is not an easy one. And, and I think a lot of people think it's easy because it's kind of the common language that people learn, if not uh, mm. English, especially in Canada, like, because Canada is a dual bilingual country. You got yeah. English and French, you know, Quebecois French. It's not, it's a little bit different. We always call it like dirty French because it's, it's not the same as like uh, France oh, French. It's beautiful. I love it. I love it. Like Quebecois, you, okay. it's, it's much, for me, it sounds better than actual French, you know. Mm. I don't know. There's more, there's energy in the language, you know, like French is a, is a romantic <laughs> and we, oui, we, oui, blah, 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 blah. But like Quebecois <laughs> is so fun. I love it. I love it. Quebecois is super blunt and, and very slang. It's like, it's very street French. It That's is. what it is. It it's is. like street That's French. Definitely that. It's definitely is. <laughs> oh man. I, I, we could, we could dive into some French stuff a little bit later. I, I spent a year in French immersion. We did, uh, uh, I, I think it's a Quebec uh, f holiday that that we celebrated, but it was like a carnival, I think is what it was okay. called. And, and that we, we ate this like snack that they made. And I'm pretty sure it's a Quebecois thing, but you, you take syrup, like maple syrup, and you put yeah. it on a stick and you roll it in snow and it turns into like a little maple syrup snow popsicle thing. It's super good. Um, I remember, remember it. Anyways, it was real, real good. Uh, Sounds good. Sounds good. Sometimes I regret not sticking around in French school. <laughs> it was so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, anyways it's useless it's okay anyway yeah. yeah yeah anyways we we don't need to care about the french come on <laughs> i'm just 
Anyways, though, uh, let's dive in here. I want to know, what are you drinking this this evening for yourself? It's the morning for me, but it is about 7 p.m. for you. Yeah, I'm really sad. I really, I was excited about drinking coffee with you, and then I realized that it was going to be the night for me, and I'm hyperactive. If I drink a coffee now, I'm never going to sleep, and I'm just going to be playing Kendama the whole night, and that's not possible. I need sleep. So I'm just having a little tea au jasmin with oh. a little bit of uh, honey and lavender in it. Anyway. Oh, sorry. it hurts me, but you're know, still welcome here. Yeah, I'm you're just sorry. losing some points, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> it is all I good. Could have okay. Starbucks, that would have been worse, right? You could have, yeah. That, yeah, that's a hard <laughs> That's a hard one for me. It's like, what you know, do I hate Starbucks or do I hate tea more? I don't know. Uh, you know, if you brought Starbucks tea, that would be the big, the big hit on me for sure. <laughs> okay, uh, no, here's no. what I want to know uh, as well. We're going to, uh, a couple icebreaker questions here, and then we're going to dive into a conversation around free running, your story, and then jump into uh, how you got into Kendama, and more recently, kind of the bridge between Kendama and, and free running. Uh, and we'll dive into that a little bit later in, in today's episode. But I want to know, um, now that you're a Kendama player as well, uh, if you could go back and teach anyone their first spike, you know, their first spike on a Kendama, you know, that pivotal trick that, that seems to hook people into the game, who would you want to teach, anyone past or present? I watched a couple of view view and I knew that question would come and I still don't have an answer. <laughs> I know that Sean, if he already stole Charlie Chaplin from me and that's oh, not yeah. cool, but I would have <laughs> say Rodney Mullen because like he's oh. such a creative guy, you know, with skateboard and stuff. I'm sure yeah, that yeah, if yeah. I would give him a kendama, he would do like stuff oh. no one has think yeah. before, you know. Rodney Mullen would stuff. be crazy. Yeah, he would so, be yeah. a cra crazy kendama player for sure. That would be, that yeah. would be a good one. Um, and then lastly, I want to know before we dive in, who is the most inspiring and maybe you can, you can choose if you want to answer this on free running or on, on Kendama, but who is the most inspiring player to you today, whether or not free running or, or Kendama? I would say I, I, I'm going to try to answer both. Uh, even if okay, yeah, for sure. free, free, free running, it's really hard for me because like, I know so many free runners and everyone has inspired me all the time, but mm -hmm. If I had to pick someone, I think it would be right now. It would be Joan, uh, Joan Tonoa. He's one of the guy I do free running with. Uh, one okay. of the guy I'm really close with, and he's inspiring me a lot in free running because he's like the total opposite athlete as I am. I'm that mm. lazy athlete that likes to do only what I like and do only like <laughs> artistic stuff that looks good. And he's like the mm. proper athlete. He trains like. He's crazy. He has like a mental that is so good. And when we train together, it's like the perfect mix. So every time I train with him, he's like pushing me up and up and up and up and it never stops. So I think he's like my biggest inspiration for now, like right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then what about on the Kendama side? You, you said you wanted to try and answer both. Yeah, that would be Tim, Timothy Bertello. Oh, the, yeah. You know, the, the French player. Yes. Dude, I love Timothy. He's, he's, I love it. He's very he's good. Just, he's, he's amazing. He's really good. And he's a lovely guy. Like he's, uh, dude, I, he I, seems I, like I, he's I, one of the it. nicest guys. He seems like he he's is. like the guy you want to become friends with, you know, like, like you he's always to. the guy that's going to roll in your crew and, and yeah. be the guy who's like picking up after you, you know, cleaning up your stuff and just making you guys look better that's because exactly he's the nicest him. guy in the group. It is. That's exactly. what I, that's exactly. what I think. Well, that's him. Like, that's literally him. Like, I was at his place, like, last week. And still, like, when I'm, when I come at his, he's, like, cooking for me every night. And uh, I'm a vegetarian, so he's, like, trying to cook really nice meal and nice veggie stuff for me all the time. Yeah. Making me nice bed. And uh, it's just, like, I feel so welcome. And because, you know, he was one of the first players I also saw on Instagram when I started to do Canada Man. He was like the first guy I started following and looking mm. at tricks and be like, oh, I could try this. I could try this. So like there's a big mix of between the personality that he is and the Kendama player that he mm -hmm. is. So it's like big influence right now. Yeah, yeah Tim, dude, Tim, <laughs> Tim, if you're listening to this afterwards, where's my invite? I want to come over for a nice cooked, cooked dinner. Yes, please come <laughs> I got, to France. I got to come to France. Um, okay. Uh, we're going to dive in here into a conversation surrounding free running, your story, how you got into it. Um, before we do, I just want to remind those of you tuning in in the chat that you guys can participate in this as well. 
leave a question down in that little Q&A tool. We've set aside some time in today's episode to answer your questions. So go drop them in there and we will get to those uh, about halfway through the episode here. Um, let's dive in here. I want to know a little bit of your background here on, on where you're from, how you got into free running. So wh where are you from, just for the rest of us that don't really know? Well, right now I am in Paris, France. That's where I live. I've been living here for four years, but originally I was born in Switzerland. Oh, no uh, way. Next to Lausanne. I don't know if anyone has heard yeah, of Lausanne. Lausanne. Yeah, Lausanne, yeah. Yes. Oh, I've never been there, but I'm, I'm very familiar with it. Yeah. It is, it's beautiful. It's, 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 that's, I can't say anything else than it's just beautiful. That little hill next to the lake and everything. It's, ah, oh, I love Lausanne. I really yeah. love it, but I grew up there. So originally I'm from Switzerland, but right now I live in France, Paris. Cool. Now, did you just move to France recently or was that a long time ago? No, like four years ago. So it's like okay. each. Cool. Like, and, and was that a parkour related or free running related decision? Yeah, okay, definitely. Sick. So Fra basically. France? Yeah, well, yeah, go so, ahead. Go ahead. So basically, I um I did everything I had to do in Switzerland, and I did all my formation. I did like twelve years of circus school, and uh, I did a little uh, like a little formation as a stuntman to learn how to fight with like uh, knives and like other like weapons oh, and no stuff way. like that, and like how to crash and just fail, you know, on purpose. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was still doing like a lot of parkour, and I really wanted to do it and make it my main job but switzerland is such a small country it's not really big for artistic people and there's like a big thing in france that is called uh, intermittence which is like a system for artistic people to still to manage to get paid for your shows but also for when you train so it's like mm -hmm. even us artistic people we can have like a stable um how do you say like money income every month so like I heard about that and uh, I started to do auditions and I auditioned at Disney, Disneyland Paris. And uh, I got casted to do uh, the Star Wars show with like no way. sabers and stuff. Yeah, that was that was crazy. It was awesome. That's so and, sick. Uh, yeah, that was sick. That was sick. I need to send you videos. It was like... Yes, please. I'll put them up on my story crazy. afterwards. Nice. Yeah, send them over. Like, and uh, so I, I moved here to do this show. And I already knew all the French friend family and the guy from, from the team because we did mm -hmm. like competition together and stuff. And then they said to me, oh, we have a job. Like we do, a, we're doing a show. Would you like to join us? And then we have another job and another job and another job. And then I was like, all right, I'm just staying in Paris. You know what? Like there's too much opportunities. Like in one year, I had more opportunities than I had in my whole life in Switzerland, just because I was in Paris, you know, this big capital of like artistic people and there's so many mm. stuff happening and the rooftops and all of that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, it changed my whole life moving here. So it was like mainly cool. a decision for the profession. Cool. That's awesome. Okay. So actually let's, let's jump back then back in time to where free running began for you. Uh, we, we want to know the story of how you got into free running and, and then we'll eventually get to the narrative, you know, where, where Kandam enters the picture. But maybe before we jump in, I noticed someone asked a question in the chat asking, what is free running? Do you want to give us a definition before we go further into the conversation? Just so, so people have an idea of what it is and what that means. I need to be really careful about what I'm going to say. <laughs> There's uh... probably a lot of debate. <laughs> Yeah, there is, because there's the big debate about parkour and free running, okay. which at the beginning, there was no difference. Parkour was just the French definition and free running was the English one. But now there's a difference. So oh, parkour okay. is like going from one point to another one, the fastest way and the most efficient way possible. So it's like pure efficiency, you know, like right. if you have obstacles in front of you, you have to jump over them and manage to get there like as fast as you can. Right. Uh, free running is the artistic part of this. It's where you add all the flips and all the nice stuff and the twist and try to push it. So the discipline is more visual, you know, like it's right. It's, it's not about reason. getting from A to B. It's about how yeah. you make A to B to look. Exactly. Definitely. Oh, that sounds good. I'm going to steal that from you. Never <laughs> <said>. <laughs> so exactly. It's like trying to make the same, but with more like beauty in it and like flow and try to add movement and flips and stuff. Okay. And so for, for you, um, you, you call yourself a free runner. So you would be on the more artistic side of that, right? <laughs> Again, or I don't like, you I don't, don't want to prescribe stuff. Yeah. I, 
most of the time I'm going to say I'm a traceur. So traceur is like someone that does parkour, but people then they're like, oh, but you don't do parkour, you do free running. So I'm like, oh yeah, I'm a free runner. So now I'm just uh, like, I enjoy moving. I play with my body. <laughs> no, that sounds bad. I don't, <laughs> but yeah, like I don't really, I, I don't really call myself anything anymore. I'm just like, I'm an acrobat. Sure. I'm someone that does flip I'm with ben. my body, yeah. basically. Yeah, I'm Ben. But if you had yeah. to put a name on it, free running. Okay, cool. Super cool. Okay, so take me back in time then to where it all began. Uh, when did free running slash parkour slash being Ben as a, as a person who moves his body, who <laughs> plays with his body, uh, when did that begin for you? Um, when I was a kid, I was like five. And uh, I was already hyperactive, moving everywhere, climbing everywhere and trying to go everywhere. My mom was like, she told me when I was just like that small, I would climb up the hills and like try to almost do flips from it. Like I didn't even know what it was. So she was like, all right, let's put you in circuit school. And I was like, yes, that sounds We're great. We're sending him to the circus. <laughs> <laughs> so I started with circus. And uh, when I was uh, around 10, I was in, uh, you know, I don't know how you say in English, you know, when you have your school, like where you go out of school between, you know, lessons. Oh, like recess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, I was there and I was just doing front flips. And uh, one guy came to me and he was like, oh, you do parkour. And I was like, I do what? <laughs> and he said to me, you do Yamakazi, you know, the, the movie Yamakazi. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I really like it. But no, I just like I just do flips. And it was like, let me show you. And that person was Daniel Pevril. He's my childhood best friend. And he just, he just said to me, let me show you parkour. And that moment in my life changed everything. Wow. <laughs> and then I was just wow. like addicted. Crazy. And so how old were you at this, at this time? 10. I was 10. You were 10, I, 10 years yeah, old and you were already flipping your body around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, yeah that's uh, yeah, crazy. I, I used to, I, I, sometimes I, uh, you know, with friends, we watch like old videos and stuff. And, uh, I saw my first video with flips, I was like eight or something like that. And my first double flip outside, I was 13. So I was like, yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> like that's crazy. Soon, you, know? you did a double flip when you were 13 years old. What, what was that off of? How did you do that? I don't know. You know, like flat, went, flat ground? Like not a double flat ground from like, from like a, I think it was like a two meters wall something like that and it was like mud or like something really disgusting okay. i just remember that i got really dirty after doing it and then i had like mud all over my clothes yeah, yeah. and my mom was not really happy but <laughs> i was just there and i did it in the gym like many times on the mattress yeah. and i was like hey this is the same height i normally do it and you know when you're a kid you don't have the same fear that you have no, when you're an adult and also you don't have that whole thing where it's like if i hurt myself I don't care. I'm going to school tomorrow. So it's like, yeah, I can have an ar a broken arm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if I hurt myself, I don't work. So that's a problem. Yeah. But yeah, so I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. <laughs> Let's just do yeah. it. And yeah, all yeah, my yeah. friends, they hyped me up and I just, I just did it. I yeah, guess. absolutely. <laughs> cool. Um, okay. So you, you got into free running when you were pretty young and, and what was that journey like? Cause now you are, you're a professional free runner. There's a big gap between doing a flip uh, on, on your playground at school to where you are yeah. now. What were, what were some of the building blocks that got you into it? When did you realize that it was more than just you enjoyed flipping your body and you were, you were actually getting into it? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know when was that, like, because every time people ask me that question and they like, ask me, like, how did you get in that? Like, is it from your childhood, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I've, I always feel like it's been there all my life. So I don't, mm. I, you know, I don't feel like there was a moment in my life where I was like, I'm going to do that. It was more like it was meant to be. I could not do anything else than this, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there was a moment where I was like, I stopped school. I'm not going to school anymore and I'm just going to do parkour. And it's because someone like said to me, hey, you're really good. Do you want to like give lessons? And, uh, and like just I have a stunt school. That was the stunt school where I did my formation. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'm just going to give lessons there. And then I was like, if I can give lessons already, maybe I can do something else. So that's when I quit school and I was like, started getting lessons and started to just travel to meet other free runners a bit everywhere. So I guess that would be the, the moment where I was like, mm. okay, I'm going to do it. But inside me, my whole life, I was like, mm, 
if I could do flipping and only flipping, that would be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think so many kids, and you know, dream of something like that. It's like if I can just do the thing that I love doing for the rest of my life, that would be awesome. And and yeah. I think that's like that childhood dream that we all hold on to, no matter what it is. You know, yeah, for for a true. lot of people, it's like hockey in Canada. A lot of kids grow up playing hockey, and they're like, dude, if I could just play hockey for the rest of my life, that would be wonderful. But you're actually doing it, right? You've actually set out. And yeah. said, like, that's what I want to do, and I'm going to do it. You've actually done yeah. the thing that you said you wanted to do, whereas I think a lot of people ah. give up on that, and they find themselves mm -hmm. working some corporate job that they don't want to be a part of, but you're doing it. Yeah. I guess that's crazy. Follow your dreams, you know. Like, everyone said to me, like, what's the, what's, the, what's the trick? And there's no trick. It's just work hard. Just work hard. Yeah. I, I have no talents. I'm not a talent. I hate the word talents because it's like, you know, you were born with a talent. No, I'm not born with a talent. I've just been training all my life really hard. And instead of going to school or instead of like playing video games or doing stuff, I was outside doing flips over and over again and climbing mm. stuff and training again and again and again. And this is how I got there. It's because I never give up. I just, even when it was really hard, I was like put 100% of myself into it. And mm -hmm. eventually it was it has to go somewhere. I think it, it has to go somewhere. Yeah. I think that's the story with anything. If you want to become excellent at anything or become one of the best in the world at anything, you have to be willing to, to actually commit to doing it, right? Yeah. You even look at some of the world's best Kendama players and what are they doing on their free time? They're not playing video games. They're not doing, you know, whatever they, you know, you're probably doing. They're, they're playing Kendama. They're grinding mm. the next trick. They're trying to hit the next thing. They're trying to, they're trying to one up their game. And that's yeah. what they're doing. And, and that's how you get to that next level is you constantly think and dream and sleep about that thing. Uh, it's crazy. And so you did that with parkour or free running. And, and now you are a professional free runner for, uh, remind me, I'm going to forget the name. I should have wrote it down on my, on my notes here. It's, but what's the group that you run with? I um, basically like the group is just like a group of friends. You know, we do stuff together. We sometimes do works and stuff. It's the French free run family. It's a pretty big okay. team. In France, like we had a big influence because there's a lot of really famous video that we did and stuff like that in France. Like, I don't know if you've seen the video Assassin's Creed, you know, on Paris and rooftop, people dressed as Assassin's yeah. Creed, the video game. Well, that's Is that, the, the team. That's, that's you? Yeah. That, I wasn't in this one, sadly. Uh, I arrived after, but that's the team I am part of that did the video. So, like, no way. That's, that's the so French cool. That's family, a legendary yeah. video. That's a legendary yes. video. Well, wow. Joan is one of the, he's the guy I was talking about, like my influence. He's yeah. one of the main character in the video, like one of the main assassins in it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, talk to me, talk to me as someone, let's say I, I want to get into free running uh, where I'm at today. I'm 25 years old. I got knee problems left and right. I'm a, I'm a broken body, just waiting to fall apart. Um, how do I get in? How do I get into free running at, at an older age, because I think a lot of the, the guys that are tuning in to uh, the podcast, the review, are a lot of older older people that have been playing Kendama as kind of a respite for injuries that they've had from other sports. You know, a lot of people flock mm. to Kendama later on in their life from fields like parkour, or BMX, or skateboarding. Um, how would I get into to free running? Where do I start? Go outside. That's the start. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Find... stay in your bedroom. Don't stay in your bedroom. Find any obstacle. Any obstacle. It can be like a small ledge, a fence or anything, a bench or anything. Just get in front of it. If you're alone, if you don't have anyone to teach you or anything, just get in front of it and be like, what would my body do to go over it? How would I jump over it? Would I put my hands? Would I just jump over it? Would I put the one leg there, one leg there, what I do it sideways and just try, mm. try to do it over and over again. And it's exactly like Kendama, you know, you're going to try something and then you're going to be like, ah, oh, maybe I can do this. If I can do this like right. this, why don't I do it like this? So you're going to be like in front of your fence and you're going to jump on the side and then you're going to so be breaking like, hey, it down. I can do it on the other side. Yeah, exactly. So like start slow. Just if you don't have a gym, if you don't have people doing parkour around you or like friends that are interested and you just want to get into it it doesn't have to be like crazy flipping it doesn't have to go on rooftops mm -hmm. and blah 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 you can just start simple go on a fence go on a wall and have fun just enjoy the fact of moving with this obstacle and trying to do stuff 
being like on your butt and trying to twist or like putting one knee and then putting like the other hand and trying to to jump over it without touching the hands and then touch on the I don't know just like try to find a way to enjoy yourself with only one mm. obstacle and then it's just gonna come naturally you know because you're gonna understand how your body works you're gonna understand what you can do with it and what you can't do with it and if you're older obviously you're gonna have some pains like you say you know injuries and stuff so what can my knee do, do because your knee is maybe in pain maybe he can't flex like this so he can't flex like this how do i adapt my body in the air so mm. it doesn't hurt my knee when i get over the fence so i think just like start slowly start yeah. move by move and start it's nothing is ridiculous the basics in parkour is like jumping over a fence jumping over a wall we yeah. all had to go to that point and that's the start for me if you don't have yeah. a gym if you don't have friends if you have a gym if you have friends go meet up with them and they're going to be like hey you can try this and this and yeah. challenge yourself you know like a like a one up or a game of ken yeah. exactly the same for parkour yeah and we'll dive more into that because i think there's so much relationship there between kendama and parkour especially in even listening there of how you break down how you approach a trick the same way that you know i would teach someone to break down a whirlwind you know it's like you're standing in front of a fence how would you flip the ball and flip the ken to make them land together break it down into the different parts learn how you, oh you know if you move your hand here if you if you toss it higher whatever you do you you begin to break it down in your head and then you approach it differently and then all of a sudden next thing you know you've hit a whirlwind and and you've broken each step down and it's the same as like getting over a fence you know doing a kong over a fence or whatever it mm -hmm. is it's like that that's something you build up to right yeah so that that's super cool that is super cool okay um i want to remind those of you in the chat uh we're going to do some live questions here in in a minute or two so make sure you go put those down in the q a tool if you put them in the chat we're going to miss them so drop them in that yeah. q a tool that's a little question box and so we will much. answer them in a couple minutes here Okay, catch me up to today though, Ben. Uh, you are now uh, running, free running. Is this a full-time career for you now? Is this, is this what you do for a living? And how do you make a living yeah. running? How does it actually work? Um, for me, it's a lot of publicity. So like the main thing I do right now is like the brands contact me and I do like videos for them. So sometimes it's going to be like you know like uh as a model but like a, as a flipping model i'm gonna say uh so like i go there and there's like a big studio and like big blah 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 i wear the brand and i do flipping and i do stuff and i go on the rooftop with them and big crews and the other one is like they just send me clothes you know like an influencer they send mm -hmm. me clothes and i go on the rooftops and i do shots and i do pack shots for them things like that so that's like right now that's the main thing because I managed to get myself into almost luxury brand level. Okay. So like, so what, what are some brands have, that you, yeah. What are some like famous brands that we might know that you've worked with? Saint Laurent, Yves Saint Laurent, maybe, you know, Yves Saint Laurent, YSL. Oh. It's, okay. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that one, oh, but I'm sure oh, people oh. listening do. Uh, yeah. YSL, uh, I did G star row. I'm just, I'm okay. like working, it's like, it's brand, you know, it's clothes. Uh, egg, yeah. that's French, also French, French, French. Let, Lots let, of French let me, friends. Let me see if there's something that is not French. No, I, yeah, I'm working with a lot of French friends. I never realized that. <laughs> oh, I might, I might, I might, but it's confidential right now. I might do something with all like luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, Gucci and stuff like that, but like Very waiting cool. for it. Yeah, Waiting that's super right cool. Now. That's awesome. Yeah, do you like that, doing those brand collabs as as a quote unquote influencer? Yeah, yeah I uh, so really like I, it. I, it's a really interesting world, influencer marketing. Like that, that's what I do for my full time job. Is I I'm the brand side of those relationships with yeah. a lot of influencers uh, with the company I work with. It's a super interesting world, and and it's really cool. And and I love hearing the stories of the influencer side, being like, I love it. I love getting to do what I do. And and it's, you get to so do cool. such a cool work for those brands. It's it's really awesome. So outside of that though, you said you were doing some some stunt work for you know films and organizations stuff like that. Uh, are you still yeah. doing some of that? And does that actually pay well for you? That like yeah, stunts. Every time there's a stunt involved, it's like the best the best paid like stuff. Like what I did for Saint Laurent. So Saint Laurent, I was like a model and a stuntman and a free runner. So I had like a triple contract. Mm -hmm. and uh so 
it was like crazy stuff. So like from one day I was just like posing with like really nice clothes. And the other day I was doing a flip. And the last day I was like jumping through a window. And that's crazy. I love doing that. Like jumping through a window. You can't do that every day in your life. And when you can mm -hmm. do it, it's such a good day. <laughs> But stunts, <laughs> I did a lot also for like live performance. So like, you mm -hmm. know, before there's a, a new movie like Terminator or something like that, they hire us. And, you know, inside the cinema, there's like guys coming from everywhere and fighting on the on the stage. before. This, the movie I've never stuff. heard of this. This is crazy. This happens yeah, at movie that. theaters? I did. Yeah, I did that in Switzerland What? a lot. Like for for Star Wars, I did it for uh, yeah Terminator. I did it for Matrix and stuff like that. Yeah, What? It was, like it was really fun. <laughs> that was like a really fun part to do because stage being on stage is my second main thing. First one is like publicity right now and like influencer and stuff. Yeah. And the second one is being on stage, like wow. doing stuff on stage. You know, for like yeah. a representation with a choreography and everything and blah 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 blah. Yeah, that, dude, that's that's so cool. Okay, um, one more question here that I'll ask, and then if we have some live questions, uh, go drop those in the Q and A tool. We'll ask them right away here. Um, but the last question I want to ask is like, what is your goal with free running? And then we're going to jump into uh, Kendama and the relationship there and some of your story there. But what is what is like when you know that you've made it in free running? Do you have that like I don't know like winning? You know, like some people are like, I want to win the Olympics. But what is like the top tier echelon of of free running, and and what does that look like for you? I think right now I'm living, I'm living it. Like I'm living what any free runner wants to do. It's like, I wake up and I'm like, what am I going to do today? Oh, free running. And that's like, that's, I'm going to go run. You know, that's the goal. That's like yeah. the, the goal. I had a goal when I was younger. I did it. It was to do like a specific jump in Paris. It is really famous. I did it. So after that, I was like, I'm just going to enjoy it. But I think, I really want to have my business later. You know, I really want to have something. And that's going to go also in some stuff I can talk about with Kendama because I really want to take Kendama in this business. But I think having a gym, you know, like a mm. free running gym with like places to do Kendama and a bar with a coffee shop in, inside and like a climbing walls and stuff, you know, like somewhere like a sports center where you can do mm -hmm. a little bit of everything. That would be like, a dream because I've always wanted yeah. to have a place of myself, you know, like somewhere yeah. where people would go inside and be like, Hey, this is Ben, you know, all of that. Yeah. That's Ben. Yeah. Yeah. That's Ben. Dude, dude, that's the dream, man. I, I want to see more of that kind of stuff. I, well, you know, maybe I'll move to France. We'll open, I'll do the coffee side of it in the Kanama. You'll get the free running. We'll, we'll collab. We'll build a gym together. I'd love you that. You are more than welcome. You are more, <laughs> hey, by the way, This is also a bed. If you, anytime you come to France, you're more than welcome at my place. Hey, let me, let me go look at some flights right it. after this. <laughs> Just All right. more than welcome. Tell me. Let's hit up a, a couple questions here. Uh, we got one un from underscore underscore sold dot out. Uh, for an absolute beginner, how do they get into parkour given that I don't have the environment? So what if they don't have things around them? How do they, how do they get into it? Well, that's a lie because you can't have nothing. Parkour is one of the hey really, that, that's a really rare, rare sport where there's no, it, it can't be nothing. Because even like flat ground, you can still try to do tricks, you know. So like, I have a lot of people saying that to me, like I live, hey Ben, I live in a really small village. So I have no spots, no famous stuff. I can't do free running. Yes, you can. I don't know a place in the world where there's not an obstacle and an obstacle can be a tree. It can be a branch. It can be a fence. It can be like a, a, a ballot de foin. I have no idea how you say that in English. It's like those round stuff, you know, for cows that are in the fields, you know. Oh, like a, a bale? Yes. Like a, a hay bale? Hay, yeah, hay yeah. bale. Yeah. Like all of that, this is stuff you can use for parkour. So if you're an absolute beginner and you live in a really, really small village, find yourself a really, really small wall find yourself a really, really small fence or find yourself a nice field somewhere with sand, somewhere with something a bit soft, you know, grass or something, and just try to do movement, try to do a cartwheel, try to do a roll on the ground, try to climb on the wall and jump on the ground and then do a nice roll. There's always, you will always find, find stuff to do. It's impossible to be in a place in the world where you can't do free running. 
basically. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to take like. you to Saskatchewan. It's the world's flattest place, I'm confident. <laughs> is it? There's is nothing. It? Yeah, it's, it's where... Just tell us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you some pictures later. You can see for miles... You can see for a long it? way it's Columbia. Yeah, well, yeah, oh yeah. You can still do tricking. Tricking is like part of free running, and it's where you do like cartwheels and flips. Yeah, you do cartwheels and all the flips. Well, Ben Herald, we all know Ben Herald. Yeah, yeah he Ben Herald. Be yeah. Tricker. So yeah, like tricking is part of free running and all of it. I do a lot of tricking. That's that's also that's gonna come on kendama because I like kind of yeah. learn kendama through that. But you will always find some somewhere somewhere yeah. to do parkour and you will always find something to do so if you really are on a flat environment do cartwheels <laughs> mm. and do nice rolls yeah start start with the gymnastic stuff absolutely exactly. cool um if you guys have more questions go put them in the q a tool uh but let, let's jump into the second half of our conversation here let's talk a little bit about kendama and how you got into that so yeah where did, where did your first point of dama contact uh come into play for you where did where did you first encounter kendama Officially, it was like a long time ago at a skate park. One of my friends had one and he was just like doing it because he used to be a bit big in Switzerland, like in the skate uh, population. But it was like not for a long time. So I just like saw a few people have one. I tried to do like a big cut or something like that a really long time ago and then never saw one again. But every time I would be like, I, I would remember it, you know, and sometimes see it on the internet and stuff. I'd be like, oh, I really need to try that thing again because mm -hmm. I'm really into like skill toys and stuff like that. I used to do fidget, uh, uh, how do you say, like pen spinning and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But have butterfly you, now. Like stuff like, uh, have you have you tried this? The like knuckle bones no, thing? No, I need to get one. It, yeah, it looks these things so are fun. fun to do. Yeah, they're fun and to do. It looks so good for like, the circulation of the blood, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fingers. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, but, sorry, yeah. go ahead. So then one day, like a, a, a bit more than a year ago, I was uh, at a friend's party and I was at his place and I just like, I was talking with him like that and I just looked up and I th saw three kendama on the shelf and I went like, dude, you have one of those. I've been like looking for one for a while. Like what's the name again of it? And he was like, oh, it's a kendama. Just try it. So he took it and he taught me how to do big cup, crack back, you yep. know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, I yeah. was like... I did it and I looked at him and I looked at my girlfriend and I was like, well, I'm fucked. <laughs> I just, and, and that's where, and that that's where it clicked. I was like, I, I, that's it. You know, it's, um, I, I, I knew I had to get one. So I got to my place. I sent him a message and I was like, I'm going to go buy one. Why did you buy yours? And it was like, it's from a friend to a friend to a friend to a friend. I didn't know nothing. So I was like, I went on the internet. I tried to find Kendama. I didn't find any shop near Paris like that was really good for selling or anything. So I just went mm -hmm. on Amazon and I bought the first Kendama I saw because I was like, I'm really excited. I really want one and I really want to do some. And yeah. then I got it. And like not even a week or two after that, I was like getting myself a Chrome Pop. And I was like, ah, no, oh. I'm addicted. Oh. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy how fast that happens, right? It's like, and my, my story was, was kind of similar to that. Someone introduced it to me when I was working at a camp. And then and then later on, it like clicked in my head again. It's like, I got to get one of those. So I bought one. And then, you know, I played with that. And I was like, I need a better one. And so I bought another one. And then I bought another one. And now I'm pretty sure I got like 30 or 40, 50. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, got. I got a lot of them. <laughs> me too <laughs> that's super cool so how long ago was this when you actually picked, you know bought your first kendama uh it was a, a bit more than a year ago it was okay like so you big not, not, not that long ago year. no yeah not that long ago okay crazy and, and that's been a new journey for you then and so what does that journey look like um i love hearing the journey of people entering into the kendama community and and how have you seen some of the differences and similarities to free running that's really what i want to know is is okay. your journey with kendama and was it similar or very different I would say right now, for what I've seen, what I'm seeing, Kendama is like such a better co community than parkour, because uh, it's smaller, even smaller. You know, something that I really liked about parkour is that it was like a small community, so like everyone would be friend with everyone. Mm -hmm. But that's even stronger in the Kendama community. So, not even a month after I started doing it, uh, I was in, I was working at Disney again because uh, I was like I do it every year for three months. So mm -hmm. I went to Disney and there was like a juggler there and he was like, oh, I do Kendama too. And I was like, all right, every day you, me, game of Ken, we just like yeah, train, yeah. train, train, train. And I started posting 
posting it on my stories. And yeah. then one of the guys sent me a message being like, hey, I do Kendama too. And me too, me too, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And two months after that, I already had like six or seven friends that I've never seen in my life. And I would like call them every week to do Game of Cans, you know, like Vizio yeah. and like, and I was just, I was in the community and I was part of it, not even like two yeah. months after starting it. So that was like, that even motivated me even more to get into it and to do know yeah. to know more about it yeah. and uh and that's when i was like i don't know there's something special you know i'm a like i said i'm a hyperactive and i'm someone that is like really passionate about stuff so every month i'm gonna find something new and i'm gonna get addicted to it for like a month or two months and then i'm just gonna jump to something new there's only a few stuff that stays here my whole life. And there's like, and it is spark that is different every time I find those stuff. Mm -hmm. And those like this parkour, this skateboard, uh, music, and now there's Kendama. And Kendama, like after a month or two, I said, I was like, I know that it's not going to be something I'm just going to like give up after a month mm -hmm. or two again. I, I knew that it was going to stay. So I was talking with my girlfriend and I was like, I want to do, I, I want this to be a real part of my life now. I don't know why. I just feel like it, this needs to be part of my life right mm -hmm. now. And I was right. Because like a few months after that, Kendama France called me because I was doing like videos on my Instagram talking about Kendama, trying to teach people what mm -hmm. it is and, you know, tell them like, try it. It's really fun. And they said to me, let's do something together. And then I just met some of the best people I've met in my life. Yeah. I just spent some of the best weekend I've spent in my life doing just playing with that wooden stick, you know? Yeah, isn't, <laughs> isn't that crazy? It's like, it's it's not a complicated thing. It's one of the most basic things in the world. And yet there's this subculture community of these crazy people that all just love playing ball and cup. And we all love each other. It's a really, it's a really tight knit community. Like you were it saying, is. like, the fact that you know Timothy, I know Timothy, we're all connected around the world and it's all because of this, this little ball and cup, you know? And, and Wait, we can, the, the, the thing is, like what you were saying is like, okay, so parkour, you can't really do parkour with someone across the world. You can't just like go live and, and like, or like do a, a FaceTime and do tricks together. Maybe you can, but it's way different. With Kanama, it's like, if I want to play a game with you, we just FaceTime each other and, and we can play right there. And all yeah. of a sudden the world barriers have gone away. It's that's and as a as a sport also you you know as a as an athlete, I'm tired all the time, and I'm in pain all the time. And sometimes mm -hmm. I just don't want to go out, but I still want to do tricks. Yeah, I don't have to go out anymore when I like when I'm really tired or like when I'm just you know I've been working a lot and everything. I can still stay at home and have tricks to do and try new stuff mm -hmm. and have fun and try to improve on myself and boost myself. And yeah. like you said, you know, like there's a lot of connection between parkour and free running. There's a lot of connection between parkour and kendama and kendama and skateboard and all of those. Yeah. And I think I just love pushing myself so hard to just have this small moment of satisfaction, you know, yeah. doing yeah. 15, 50 minutes of the same tricks to just make it once and be like, yeah, do, do you feel like it's the same satisfaction uh, for you, like landing a trick in parkour, you know, something that you've been Definitely. working towards for a while or a new jump that you're trying to hit uh, the Definitely. same with Kendama? Do you find that same dopamine rush? Yeah, yeah I do. I yeah. don't have maybe the adrenaline that can like... Yeah, you don't get that same like heart race. If I don't make this jump, I'm going to die kind of thing. Yeah, I don't get that. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, like... If I miss this big cup, I'm dead. I, I, but I, you know, I did like I don't know if you've seen the videos. I did like a two edits on the rooftop with the kendama. Yeah, and uh, I had this ad adrenaline rush because that's a Ben Herald, and I was like, I can't drop this. This is too precious. Yeah. So, so I had the same little thing when I was like on the, you know, like I, I have to make this trick. I have to do my 1.5 jug spike. If I mm -hmm. don't make it, it's gonna fall. You know, it's the yeah. same as me. Like I had this little. I don't know. I have this this thing in me that goes like, 
mm, I'm excited. You know, I really yeah, want to do yeah. it. Like, I'm so excited about doing. Do you it. like? Do you like? Do you crave that adrenaline? I uh, I feel like a lot of people in the free running or parkour, you know, especially with roof jumping and that kind of stuff, because you you do a fair amount of that. Uh, do you crave that adrenaline rush, like that yeah. that thrill seeker? Like, I need to feel like I'm gonna die if I don't make this. Do you like that feeling? Well, yes and no. So. Let me explain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to basically I, that that's the part of free running that sketches me out. I'm like, I love the the aesthetic and everything, but I want to stay on the ground. I don't want to jump across a roof because I feel like I would. I don't know. I I would be so sketched out. I don't crave that. You don't have to like like I always say to people, free running on the rooftop is like this is like what we call the master level. You know, like leave it to the people that have been doing it for years and years and years and years. If you do free running and stuff, stay on the ground where it's safe and where it's fun. When I'm on the rooftop, what I do, I don't even give 50% of my level. Like any jump that I'm going to do is going to be like two times smaller than what I would normally be able to do. Right. Because I never You want it to be incredibly life. easy. Yeah. I, I would never risk my life. And I don't like the fact that I could die. It's not... But I like the adrenaline rush. Yes, that's yeah. a lot of people for free running when they do an interview, they're like, no, no, I do it for the view. I do it because of this, this, this. Nah, I'm not going to lie to you. I love the adrenaline rush. I'm yeah. I'm kind of kind, kind of an adrenaline junkie. You know, it's like, yeah. I always try to push it more and more and more. But I have my limits. There's stuff that yeah. I don't like to do because I don't feel safe. You know, hanging from a crane. You know, people who does that, they hang from a oh, crane. Oh, and then and they like, like let one go. Yeah. Oh, that's, I hate that. I hate that so much. That's a nope for me. Because it's like oh. putting yourself in danger, but like, there's no point. You know, doing a jump, there's the jump. Doing a flip, yeah. there's the flip. Yeah. Doing, it, it, just like hanging yourself, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's just like, hey, look, I could die, but I'm not gonna going to. I don't know. That's oh, not I'm fun, thinking about so. that right now. It gives me so much tension in my body. <laughs> okay. I, okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Go ahead. I know. I was going to say like, I hang, I, I did it like on rooftop, like hang myself on a wall for a picture or stuff like that. Yes. But not on a crane. Totally different. You don't have anything to put your feet on. Where, so when you climb back up, it's like a full muscle up, up. Yeah. No, too much danger for nothing. Same. Don't walk. I don't like cranes. I'm just going to say, I don't like cranes. Too much. Yeah, too cranes much are the worst. <laughs> yeah. I this guy's like got cranes. a thing against cranes. Yeah, I hate cranes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry if anyone is Cranians, but I, I hate cranes. <laughs> yeah, Ukrainians, crane operators, the birds, <laughs> hates them all. Exactly. You know, really, anything that is like too much danger for nothing, meh. Okay. I like yeah, my that's super interesting. In, but that's it. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think I crave some of the same feeling. I, I, I used to BMX and do dirt jumping in particular. And I, Ooh, I love nice. the feeling of being in the air or downhill mountain biking. I love the adrenaline of like, knowing that if I mess up, I could go flying into a tree at any moment. And, and that would be terrifying and terrible. But you don't do the things that you're not comfortable with. It's like you, you it, it's the same concept It's like if you downhill mountain bike, and you're ripping down a, a black and you can do black diamonds like pretty quick and you can rip them and shred and you know scruff the corners pretty good you're not going to do that on a double black you might do the double black but you're going to go way slower you're going to control yourself you're going to play it safer but you can go down a couple tiers do the the blues or the blacks or whatever it is and then just shred those right it's the same yeah. idea it's like know your limits and if you're going to go on the roof play back you know tone it down a bit okay but exactly. so so coming back to kendama though uh the relationship there and that adrenaline rush and seeking that do you you, you don't necessarily have the same adrenaline rush, but you still get that same dopamine hit with Kendama. Do you, do you ever see a world in which you would lean towards Kendama over free running or do you see them as two things that have come together so brilliantly? Anything is possible. Like I, my life is full of surprises. So I, if I want to, I will. If I want to do more of Kendama than free running, I will. And nothing is going to tell me the opposite. Even if it's like it gets me less money or even if it's like, you know, lose a lot of followers on Instagram because I don't do rooftop jumps and stuff. If it makes me happier, I will continue to do it. Right now, those last months, I've been doing way more Kendama than I've been doing free running. Hmm. And I really don't mind it. Cause... Have you got pushback because of that from your followers? Uh, not really. I think like... 
a lot of people that follow me when like when I had a big rush because I used to have beginning of the no yeah beginning of last year I was like 5k and I gained 45k in one week so like wow. my well, how did that happen uh maybe you've seen the Charlie Chaplin video you know the one where I'm like walking almost uh, almost fall and I go like ah and then I fall and I catch myself back at yeah the end. yeah yeah okay and, and that like, that oh, video just blew up yeah it did like 90 almost 90 millions on TikTok views wow. And I was like almost 10k likes, like uh, 10k, uh, no, 10 million v- uh, likes. Something stupid. Yeah, yeah, stupid, yeah. stupid. And, so, and okay. uh, way too much. And uh, so people, like, they came and they logged on my account because they wanted to see rooftop. So most of the people that unfollowed me, it's because they realized that it was my account was more than just rooftop. You know, there's like there's gonna right. be a lot about myself too. It's not just gonna be pictures of rooftop and videos of rooftop yeah. and when i got all of those followers i did the story and i said guys i'm gonna do a lot of this and i'm gonna do a lot of music and a lot of the rest if you don't want to see this unfollow me i don't care i just i want my followers to like what yeah. i do and i want them to follow me for that and a lot a lot of the people that used to follow me that didn't know kendama they now have one or they like send me videos yeah, of yeah. them like doing it or they're like Oh, that tricks you did it last week, but like with a better thing, blah blah blah, and blah blah blah. So people get in- interested into it. Yeah, and I guess it's because of the way I did it. You know, like I yeah. introduced it. I didn't just like from a day to another started doing kendama. I was like, yeah. this is kendama. Look yeah. what I can do with it. Dude, and, and that man, that that's the way to do it, right? I see so many people sell out, right? If they the amount of people that like post a video on something and it goes viral and they just change their whole life to, to keep doing that because they crave the, they crave the dopamine of having, having followers hit like on them. And then they, they change what they like. They change what they love so that they can, you know, feed the Instagram engine rather than feed themselves, you know? And that, that's so draining and it's so heart wrenching to watch that happen to people because they just sell out. Uh, but but what you're doing is you're saying no like i just want to keep doing what i like doing if that means i end up going towards kendama over a parkour in the future because i like it more you're fine with that you're you're yeah, like i just okay. want to do what makes me happy and that i enjoy i don't i don't care whether or not my i have more or less followers i just want to yeah, do it definitely. because i like doing it and, and, and man that that's the place to be right and regardless so. of the followers. i think so yeah i th- i think like you know, like like we said at the beginning of, of this, like I started parkour and I did parkour and I'm where I am right now because I'm only doing what makes me happy. Yeah. If I start, if I stop this and now and I do something else and I start like going against my will, that's not going to go well for me. Everything yeah. went well for me because I do what I like. So uh, let's go and keep on doing it this way, you know? Yeah. Dude, that, that's some good wisdom for, I think there's so many new players in Kendama that try and do what everybody else is doing because they think it's going to get them followers or likes and stuff like that. And then they burn out. They don't end up playing Kendama. You know, they, they focus too much on posting their tricks rather than just enjoying the game. They focus yeah. too much on getting, getting, you know, attention rather than finding out what they really like or people change their style. And I bet you see that even in parkour is, or in free running that there's a, probably a specific so style that's, the meta you know that everybody is doing and it's kind of the the top style or whatever the trick is and and it's like kind of selling out to keep doing that it's like in kanama it's like taps and juggles or or late goons. Yeah. i don't like i don't like doing those tricks and so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do late goons yeah, I because i just don't enjoy them but i know that if i would do them and, and get better at them people would love that i just don't enjoy them i like doing simpler stuff and so don't i'm gonna it, stick then. to doing what i do cool okay yeah, I- um we got a bunch of questions in here that I definitely want to hit, uh, but I want to ask uh, oh. before we jump into those uh, around today. I'm you you recently competed in like battle. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, <laughs> can you hear me now? <laughs> I'm way. Yes, you're back. How about now? Sorry. Okay, perfect. Um, Okay, so I want to know today, you just competed in Battle at the Border. You've been playing Kendama for a year now, uh, or a little over a year. You're a Kendama France ambassador. You are, you're becoming well-known within the Kendama community. Um, what do you see for yourself in the next year? Where do you want to take Kendama? Where do, you, where do you want to be in the community a year from now? A year from now? Uh, I want to... I wanna, um, all right. So, 
I have influence, you know, because I have followers and stuff like that. And it's not something that is really common in uh, free running, uh, free running <laughs> in Kendama right now. Yeah. So I want to use that. I want to use that to bring Kendama to the world and try to make more people know what it is. I don't want everyone to have a Kendama. I don't want everyone to buy a Kendama and like push people to buy it. I just want it to be known, you know, like. So when people see me in the street with this, they don't gonna say, hey, it's a bit of a No, you know, like mm -hmm. I really want to help the discipline have like the view and like everything that she, she, she deserve. I'm gonna say she because she's a discipline. No, okay. French, <laughs> French in my head right now. That's yeah, French. it's the <laughs> French. Everything is either male or female. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I think I really want to help the community to push and like go further and try to get more on the medias, you know, because uh, that's what I do with uh, Kenlama France a lot, you know, like when I got there and they said to me, help us in those, you know, tr let's try to do more on mm -hmm. Instagram, TikTok, go on YouTube, do tutorials and stuff like that. So I really want to be more present on those and try to give everything that I have and everything that I can to the discipline to the discipline mm. this discipline is it is it yeah how you yeah, say yeah, it? yeah okay yes so yeah. in a year there i really i really hope like it's bigger and there's more stuff and people are more comfortable with it and there's like i don't know i just i just want it to be as as big as parkour is now because when i started parkour it was the same as kendama right now you know it was like this this little community that was not really big and not a lot of people knew it. And now it's like a big boom. Everyone knows parkour. Everyone wants to do parkour. So I'm like, let's, let's do that with Kendama. You know, let's make it bigger. Let's do stuff with it. Let's try to put it to the media as more. Let's try to, I don't know, bring it to the world, you know, because I know mm -hmm. I talked a lot. I talked with so many Kendama players because I knew that I was going to do this interview. So I really wanted to, know more about it and also because i have projects stuff i'm not gonna say now but i have projects in the kendama community too and like for my future and stuff and i really wanted to know more about this you know what is kendama mm -hmm. what is happening right now and i had big 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 conversation with a theo you know tf yeah 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 theo and uh we talked a lot about you know how i, I know that in French, we say une niche, so it's like a small community. Mm -hmm. And Kendama, this is what it is right now. And I know that there's a lot of people that are really afraid of going out of this and going to the world. You know, has like Team and Theo when they did uh, get uh, uh, France has got Kendama. talent. Yeah, exactly. You know, like some people that were a bit like, no. no, man, I thought that was so cool. I thought I that was wonderful. Let's bring it to that, you know, let's, let's bring it to the world. And I know that there's a lot of people that are like, ah, I don't know, because it's, it's just that thing that I'm playing with my friends, you know, at home, I don't want it to be such a big thing and make such a big deal about it. But dude, mm -hmm. that's sweet. Sweet is a big deal. Everything they're doing is crazy, you know, like, yeah. they, bring, they bring it to another dimension, like to another, to yeah. another level. Yeah, they've and been I doing think, some really good work there. And I think that's good, you know, like, Yes, maybe there's stuff that you could be like, ah, and um, maybe this is too much. There's some stuff like I don't agree about also with parkour and all of that. But evolution. In mm. all of those disciplines, you need to have evolution. Not be scared of it. Because mm -hmm. even if for you, it's, this is just a little thing you're playing with your friends at home, there's no wrong in making it more famous. There's no wrong in making it bigger. Yeah. And I think that could be great for the Kendama community because it's... It's such a good community, and yeah, man, more, I love it. With more stuff, you know, there's like that means more, more possibility to big to do big events and to do like bigger competitions and to bring more people to places mm -hmm. and maybe have like a whole stadium empty with only like Kendama players in the middle mm -hmm. of it and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. But yeah. Cool. I really. Uh, <laughs> I just Dude, I, I agree, man. I think I think Kanama has a really bright future ahead of itself. Uh, Kanama has gone through this kind of like wave where it grew really quick in America. I, a lot of that because of Colin Sander and what he had done early on. Yeah. And it really boomed throughout, I think it was like, what, 2008 to 2010, uh, roughly in those early years. 
And then it grew and grew and then it kind of dipped down. And then more recently, it's been on a really fast trajectory yeah. of growth. And I think that it's going to keep growing. We might see another dip in the future, but I think we're, we're on a really good path. There's a lot of, of publicity around Kanama now, and it's just becoming a more well-known and well-respected subculture sport. And, and I'm really excited about that. And I'm excited to be a part of that growth, part of that journey, and to just watch the evolution of Kanama. But well, I think you you, oh, yeah, you have ahead. like a big you you have a big influence in in the middle of it with with the brew view you know with the podcast and all of it it's this is the kind of evolution I'm talking about you know it's not it's not just a toy you're playing with yeah. anymore it's like it's more you you meeting people you're doing interviews you're talking about it and you're doing like hours of interview and podcast that you put on Spotify and then people's gonna listen to it yeah. while they enjoy their coffee and that's evolution. That's yeah. bringing it yeah, to another it's, it's level. Yeah, seeing the bigger picture, right? It, it's exactly. saying that Kanama is more than just a ball in a cup. It's a community. It's a conversation. It's 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 a lot of different things. It's events. It's culture. That's what mm -hmm. it is. It is. It's culture. So, and and yeah, seeing the bigger picture and finding your place in it is also really important. I think a lot of people uh, are like, man, I just wish I was more involved in Kendama. I wish I could be m more involved, but I'm not good enough. I don't I don't do enough tricks. I'm not a good. It's like, dude. I'm not that good. I, I like can compete at a, at a decently high level, but, but I found my place. I found my opportunity to pour into this community because I want to see Kanama grow as more than just tricks, as more than just a ball and cup. I want to see Kanama grow as, as a movement of people that care about other people and that it's a conversation starter that we can really create deeper connection between people like this. That's what I yeah. want to see with Kanama. That's, that's so, so true. Okay, uh, let's hit up a couple questions here now. I don't even know what this question is because it's in French. Uh, so let me try and say it. Uh, okay, this is you from say it. You try Mateo underscore 1409. Uh, pourquoi tu parles uh, pas en français? Pourquoi je parle pas en français? Parce qu'actuellement, la plupart des personnes qui nous suivent et la plupart des personnes qui sont là, c'est sûrement des Anglais. Donc il vaut mieux que je parle en anglais parce que sinon personne va me comprendre comme ce qui est en train de se passer. Donc il oui. vaut mieux pas que je parle en français. Oui, oui, baguette, baguette croissant. <rire> Qu croissant. <rire> croissant. Croissant, croissant. Uh, okay, so you give, us, give us a quick translation. What, what is uh, Matteo asking? He's like, why are you not speaking French, basically? <rire> Nice. So I just said like because most of the people listening and blah blah blah, it's more English and it's a more international international language. Yeah, 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 man. But we're getting better with AI now. AI is getting, uh, you know, we're we're so good at translating on the fly now from you know a French audio to English subtitles in live translation. It's crazy. You can apps apps are it's getting creepy, man. <laughs> it's 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 so weird. Like I've seen there's no option like on Instagram. You know, EJTV. I, I, yep. GTV. Yeah, I GTV like yeah. you can ask them to automate it, uh, subtitles now. Oh, no, so, like if you do I a video, like it, there's just an AI that like creates subtitles for your video. Oh, I should find out if I can do that for past review episodes. because I upload them not only to just Spotify and, and other podcast platforms, but also to IGTV afterwards. So, uh, oh, yeah. I, I know some people watch them on there. Cool. Um, yeah, you from, need to check it. Yeah. Yeah. I got to peep that, uh, underscore sold out, uh, asks again, uh, can we improvise slash create Kendama tricks apart from what's already there? Absolutely. It's Kendama and like, like parkour, like free running. Yeah. It is, there is unlimited possibility with what you can do with it. There is a new trick created every day. And, and maybe you want to speak to that uh, a little bit there as well. Even as someone that's a beginner you know, or not a beginner, you've been playing for a year, you know, an advanced player, someone who's pretty deep into it. You've seen in the past year, the growth of Kendama and the tricks. It's like a lot of new tricks were created this year. But yeah, do you, yeah, do you want to add to that? Like, yeah, like, I start, I feel like when I started Kendama, I was like, oh, everyone said to me that, you, you know, like you said, it's coming back up. It, like I started at that moment where it was starting to come back up. And when I started watching it, there was a lot of like stalls and uh, a lot of stalls and also a lot of stalls. <laughs> and I was like, ah, I love that. And then right after cloud bounce and i was yeah. like what? <laughs> what the glorious cloud bounce that changed the game of kendama for, and I know for that 2020 before that they had like the tightrope and the uh, the bb you know all of yeah, that the balance, and yeah. it was just like cloud bounce and when i saw that i was like oh yeah <laughs> and it, people just like throwing oh, stuff oh yeah. everywhere oh man it was crazy that, that was crazy like there was cloud bounce and i know that right after that they got like into even more weird tricks. I learned like about dirty slingers and stuff yep. like that. You know, I don't know if you know Oscar Ireland. 
He's also like Kendama of France. Uh, he's from Native. Okay, yeah, the the name is familiar. I, I might, he's like maybe, he's doing. A I lot think of I follow him. Beam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beam, beam tricks, you know, like and stuff like that. And then this got a bit, and I started saw a lot of people doing stuff with the fingers, and so like everything is moving all the time. There's new stuff coming up. The big question is like, what can't you do? <laughs> There's yeah. literally nothing you can't do. Yeah, you can't put your thumb if you do a lunar. That's a rule, <laughs> but yeah. the rest, well, well, the and, rest and, is like. Yeah, is yeah. that the same for uh, parkour? Are there are there rules to parkour yeah. of what you're not supposed to do? Yeah, there's unofficial rules. Like, if you do a, what we call a planche, is like you know when you hang down on the wall and you climb on the wall. Yeah, you shouldn't use your elbows. So like, it's oh, okay. not really valid. You know, if you do it with your elbows, uh, if you do parkour and you just climb on the wall. Never put your knees down. If you're standing, you're on the wall and you put your knee to like stand up, everyone's going to look at you and be like, eh, why would you do that? You know? Interesting. It's, it's bad the, for the knee and it's like, nah, it's not classy. You know, it's like a kid going on the wall. Interesting. So, you, so yeah, there's like little rules and stuff like that. You don't wear gloves. Nah. No gloves. Do no that. gloves. No gloves. You don't wear gloves. You make your hands strong. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that that's so much uh, similar to Kendama. In terms of these things, it's like there's like these little taboos that people have. It's like always end on a spike. Don't don't finish your trick. Like if you do a lighthouse flip, make sure that you spike it afterwards. You know, that yeah. that's how you conclude a line or conclude a trick. It's if you don't spike it, it's not finished. You know, your line isn't finished. We have uh, a stick stick in uh, in parkour is when you land or something, you have to land in precision and not move after. That's called mm. a stick. And it's like, if you do a big precision, so you jump from a wall and land on something else, if you don't stick it, if you go like bounce or like bounce back, it's not validated. You have to stick Interesting. It. Yeah, that's so cool. Like, yeah, that's just so, like it. <laughs> that is really cool. I love, I love those little things that you learn about communities. And you don't usually find that out until you're deeper into the community. Yeah. It's like after you post your video online and you're like, look at this cool trick I did. And then people are like, you handed it. Uh, <laughs> You didn't finish on a spike. You didn't do this. And then the kid's just defeated. He's like, I didn't know. I just wanted to post my trick. I thought it was cool. <laughs> That's okay. so true. Let me see if there's a couple more questions in here. And then we'll all wrap up here uh, shortly. Uh, Sold Out asks, uh, does Kanama ship to Asia and India? I found some unrecognized sellers on Amazon. Um, first off, let me just recommend, don't buy Kanamas on Amazon. Uh, it doesn't really support the businesses that are actually growing the sport. If you can, uh, uh, check check a company on their actual website. Most uh, companies sell pretty internationally, uh, but probably the, the ones you should look into for international shipping to Asian India would probably be like Chrome or Sweets yeah. or or maybe Soul Kanamas. I don't know if they ship uh, worldwide. I think they do. Uh, but the, some of the bigger companies definitely would have more international I don't shipping. I do like, yeah. yeah. Go for Chrome. <laughs> Chrome. Are, do you have dreams of becoming a sponsored player for a company in Kendama? No, I just want my name on a Kendama. That's it. Oh, that's cool. Just, that's just one of my goals. I just want to I just want to have my name somewhere, you know, on a Kendama yeah. one day and design design a Taba. But that's, ah, uh, yeah, that would be like one of my things. But being pro, I don't know. I think I'm over that, you know, like, um, I also didn't know if I was going to do bad out of the border and stuff like that mm -hmm. because I didn't know if I really wanted to do compete because I stopped competing in parkour because like I was over it but mm -hmm. I really yeah. enjoyed bad out of the border it was so cool I'm going to yeah, do KK Kendama next, uh, next month so like yeah yeah oh that's sick okay talk to so, me actually about that That what does competing look like in, in parkour and how is it similar or different from Kendama what could we learn from it as a Kendama community uh you stress the same <laughs> before you do something like this i had the same stress before doing you know my tricks and uh, before doing flips. but the big 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 difference is that free running is solo you know you're not against anyone it's like a freestyle it would mm. be like a, a big freestyle comp or oh, there's a speed run speed run is like a speed ladder so you have to do you know like a better timing than anyone else mm -hmm. but <sighs> I don't know, like in parkour competition, it's a lot like who's going to do the bigger flips, who's going to do the bigger blah, 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 and the bigger blah, blah, blah. 
And everyone's like looking at it. They'll be like, oh, oh, but it's not that thing that I found in Kendama was like, everyone is pushing everyone to do better. Interesting. So in parkour, it's a little bit more competitive. Like I need to win. Yeah. Whereas in Kendama, it's like, we all need to win. I don't think it's, I need to win. It's, I need to be better. Okay. Because now is the big social media part of parkour. So everyone mm. wants to be the best and everyone wants to be well seen. And if you have 10,000 followers on Instagram and you come to a competition and you, go, you, you finish last, everyone's going to be like, look, he's got a lot of followers and he's not even really good. So like everyone's like putting pressure on themselves to just be the best and, you know, show their level. And mm. I know a lot about competition because I used to do a lot, but I'm the speaker for the, the world championship of parkour. Like the... Mm. The main one, the main mm -hmm. world championship, the official one, I do the speaking. So I'm the one that is like, hey, he did a backflip, he did a front flip with my mic. Yeah. So like I'm in the middle of it and I see everything and there's a little bit too much of I want to be the best. Not yeah. just I want to win, but I want to be the best and I want to do the coolest trick. And, and we, we do saw, see some of that in Kendama, but but not nearly yeah, as much. I'm sure I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. When I saw, when I looked at the open of Battle of the Border, you could see that there's some there's some kids that just want to show up, you know, and stuff like that. But that's going to happen everywhere. Yeah. You know, that's normal. But the when I did it, you know, when I did the battle at the border, the people that I was against, uh, I did three, three match. I won two and lost one. And one of them, the guy in front of me, he had exactly the same level as me. And I had so much fun doing this. Like, mm -hmm. it was so much fun. And at the end, he looked at me and he said, man, I just had so much fun. Like, that was so cool. And I realized that he had almost, uh, as much fun as I had. And we just, like, really had a good time instead of having a competition. He was, like, playing a game of Ken with a total, complete stranger, you know. And that's not something I really found anymore in parkour. That's not something mm. I really have. Even in events and stuff like that, it's just like everyone looking at the pros or everyone looking at the one that's doing the best trick and stuff like that. And no one is really training. When I did my first small event of Kendama in France, everyone was doing Kendama. And no one would just like put their Kendama down to watch team play or to watch Oscar play or to watch anyone play. No, everyone would be training and would be playing and be like, oh, teach me something. Oh, that mm. was cool. How do you do that? Oh, this, this, this. There's more like communication, exchange. Like I said, it's a smaller community. So I feel like people are closer. So I preferred the competition in Kenama that I did than all the competition that I did in parkour right now. Cool. Wow. That's really cool. Do you think there's anything that we can learn as a Kendama community, especially in event hosting? Because Kendama is still so young. Like we haven't like, yes, it's an old game, but in terms of competitive play and the direction of Kendama, we're, we're still relatively young. We're a smaller community. We're still figuring things out. Uh, do you see opportunities for us to improve what competitions look like in Kendama that you've seen work really, really well for parkour? Uh, well, you can like easy way to like improve it is to get attached to like a bigger festival so maybe you know about the fees no uh oh oh f-i-s-e yeah 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 you know that big events yeah. like this is where like every fees in the montpellier and the one in hiroshima the competition of parkour that happens there at that event so that could be fun you know having yeah. like a big festival of big BMX and like skaters and stuff like that and having yeah. a competition of Kendama in the middle, that's good because that brings all of that community to see it yeah. and to see it as a competition, it makes you want to do it even more, you know? Yeah. Because you really like to see the community and all of it. So that's cool. Yeah, and that, I think that's the wave we're hitting right now with Kendama now is we're getting into the competitive era of Kendama where, you know, beforehand it was all about, you know, we went through the phase of like just showing people what's capable with Kendama. Then we went through, okay, let's master that. And now we're into the, the competitive era where mm. there's more events and it's more about, you know, showing how consistent, how good you are compared to other people, which is both a good and maybe not good thing for the community. It's a growth period, right? We're going to learn. Mm. We're going to learn a lot in it. But now we're getting to the, comp the competitive era where we're beginning to see people come in and they're immediately wanting to get into the competitive scene, playing in online competitions, finding out where they place, their ranking and all that kind of stuff. 
And I think that's so cool because that actually attracts a lot of people. A lot of people want to come to Kanama for the competitive nature. But the irony is this. This is a cool part about it is that a lot of people come into Kendama with this idea that they're going to be the best and be a competitive and they're going to beat other people. And they come out of it like, man, I just love this community so much. I just want to be friends with everybody. And it's like, it's like they, they lose that mentality so fast no, of like good. wanting to be better than other people to, I want to see everyone better. That's what I think is that's the beautiful. wildest thing about Kendama. It is. It's so good. I mean, and that's, that's something you need to take advantage of, you know, like I yeah. said, if you do a festival and thing, there's going to be a lot of people that be like, oh, I want to compete. But you already know that all of those people, you're going to convert them into like nice, chill yeah. <laughs> players, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, yeah, you're going to compete. Don't worry. You'll just be part of the family in a month. But that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And if I could say what, a second thing about it is just keep it real, keep it chill. Everything yeah. that is happening right now is chill. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt, yes, Matt, yeah, Matt, and, Matt Sweet. was it Matt and Chad, Matt and yeah. Chad, right, at the, those comments, beautiful, like, so nice, it was, it was chill, it was really chill, when I, I was on the live, at the moment, and I was, like, so stressed, and I just said, like, oh, guys, I'm sorry, I'm really stressed, and both of them, they were, like, take your time, we chill, don't worry, we know about it, thank you for your honesty, blah, 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 and that just mm -hmm. made me, like, yeah and chill yeah. down for a bit and i was like oh they understand they know what i'm going through we are chill there's no pressure i'm not playing my life right now i'm playing kendama you know i'm having yeah. fun that reminded me that and i think that's even if you go in competitive in, even if you go in big competition where you have big prices and stuff like that just keep it chill and keep it like how it is it's kendama yeah. guys you know like it's it, wood. It, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I always tell people. It's like, guys, we're we're a bunch of grown adults playing ball in a cup. You know, Let, we don't need to take ourselves that seriously. Uh, no, we don't. Um, when I when I went to the event in a small competition in the south of France, my girlfriend she was there with other friends and she was staying at theirs. And all of her friends they said like, we want to go and see Ben because we wonder what it looks like to see many bands. You know, like many people mm. playing this together. And they said like. It's definitely what we imagine. So that's like a bunch of grown-ups and kids like in a circle, all like in front of their thing going like this. Yeah. And just be like, oh, 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 all the every five seconds. And it's like, it looks so cool. Yeah. It looks like children having fun, but it's like yeah. they don't care about the rest and how they look. And they're just like properly having fun with the toy, you know? Yeah, it, that's so, okay. So A, hopefully a. this whole COVID <laughs> thing is done. Uh, this year and we have Mako in live in person. Hopefully you're able to come because that is quite the experience. Yeah, you show up and if you show up the day before the event, they do a pre-party and they host at the sweet shop and it's like the day before competition kicks off. And instead of seeing people just like heads down trying to grind and practice their tricks, you see people playing games of Ken, pros playing with people, seshing and just chilling with people and everybody's just, man, the thing that I see with pros in Kanama is that they don't like being pros per se in the like they don't like the clout of like having a whole bunch of people come up to them and like seeing them as this all and mighty Kanama player no they just want to hang out with you play Dama chat with you and just share that mutual love it's like I don't think anybody not many people at least see themselves as that elite and we're just all guys playing Kanama we're all playing yeah. ball in a cup you know it's not it's serious but it's not that serious you know it's not let's really, have some fun yeah. But it's like, anyways. It's, it's serious because you put name and you put place, class more, class more, like levels and stuff on it. Yep. But we're still the same children, you know, we're all the same. <laughs> yeah, we're all here having fun. We're all just having fun. Anyways, we, we should uh, put, a, put a little bow on this here um, and, and wrap it up here. If there's any questions, uh, please drop them in there and we'll, we'll answer them here before we, we jump. But uh, the last thing I want to ask you is, you know, if you were to say some words of wisdom to the Kanama community or to the parkour community that, I, that you believe the Kanama community needs to hear, what would you want to say to them? Keep on playing, keep on having fun. And as long as you're having fun, everything will be okay <laughs> as long as you're loving what you're doing and you're having fun everything is gonna go well there's no problem nothing to worry about everything is just gonna go in the right direction and right where it has to be yeah dude there, there's been some great nuggets throughout this episode you know even from from the very beginning it's like find what you love and do it 
just do it. You know, you're, if you really love it, you're going to find a way to do it. If you want to become a professional free runner, just run, have fun, just enjoy it, explore your body, you know, go do flips, find out what you can do and Mm. just do it. There's no obstacle. You know, the only obstacle is your brain. You know, you can find obstacles to jump over. If you're in a field, if you live in Saskatchewan, like I did for the past eight years or whatever, uh, where it's all flat, you can still do cartwheels. You can still do tricking. You can still do all of that stuff. Uh, and, and a couple other nuggets that I really enjoyed from, from you in, in particular was like your, your passion, your passion for just actually pursuing something, you know? Yeah. And, that, and even that's me. I'm a passionate person and that's all that is in the, my life, I guess. And, and you radiate that. Right. And we need more people that are like that in the economic community, people that get passionate about the real heartbeat of it, not the passion about like, I need to be better than people, but no, like, I just want to progress. I want to do the thing I love. And, and I think that's, that's where, that's where the money is, you know, that's where, that's where the good stuff is. And it so is. I'm excited to see what you do, Ben. I'm excited to, to continue to watch your journey. Uh, I'm going to make my way to France someday. We're going to, we're going to yes, set. Please. You're going to teach me how to jump across roofs. Uh, yes. and, and we're going to have a good time there. So let me say thank you to those of you tuning in live. And thank you to those listening on Spotify or Apple podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You. Uh, we appreciate you guys so much. You can, you can download this episode, get, leave a like, leave a subscribe. Let me know that you said hi. Uh, and we will look forward to seeing you next week. We got a really wonderful interview coming up with Ooh. Mr. Liam Router, Soul Kanamas Ooh. Pro next week on the review. So make sure you guys tune in next week to catch that live conversation where we dive into Liam's journey to going pro and winning battle at the border open division yes. this year. So thank you so much, Ben. Make sure you go hit that follow button on Ben. Go show him some love and join the Coffee Gang Discord for all the post-show conversations that we have. Anyways, Ben, thank you so much and peace. Thanks a lot for that. It was amazing. I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. This was a joy. All right. See you later. See you. Bye.